ball. The flag stays down. Heaney! Oh! He scored again! It's Davis again! It's job done now! Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of the Northern Ireland podcast with myself, Adam Johnson and Andy McComb. Today uh, we have some guest for you, a man who has made 80 caps for Northern Ireland. Nine goals for Northern Ireland. And has scored some of the finest headers ever seen here at the National Football Stadium at Windsor Park. And there have been some amount of headers here at Windsor Park, mostly in the cup. Uh, Anyway, um, we have this shirt. Nicely presented here in front of us that we're going to give away, signed by the man himself. And Andy's going to share more about how you can win that. Yeah, so if you comment underneath our YouTube video of the podcast with old Gareth McCauley. Oh, Gareth McCauley. The more O's, the better. Yeah, I'd say more O, the better. Yeah, yeah maybe like an O and a zero. O, that type of O. Just like, oh. Yeah. So comment underneath the YouTube video and also... Subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's Northern Ireland on YouTube, our channel. And we will be checking. It will void your entry if you don't subscribe to us. Aye, and then you have until Tuesday the 27th of August to enter. So get your entries in before then and then we'll pick a winner and we'll let the lucky winner uh, be notified through YouTube or however we'll get in contact with you. But it's the only way in which you're going to get your hands on this shirt. What a shirt it is. Who wouldn't want a signed Gareth McCauley shirt? Signed by his own fur hand. I think you can see that on your screen now. Um, and obviously, if you are listening to the podcast as well, make sure you go into the YouTube, uh, our YouTube channel to enter as well. Don't feel like you're left out because you're only listening. All you've got to do is go on YouTube.com, find our uh, channel, and uh, just comment underneath as well. But anyway, enough of us talking about competitions. Let's get into the podcast, and we're going to join Gareth at his very nice home right now. <laughs> from the West Brom man. They've got the big man on the edge of the penalty area once more. And up goes McCauley! And Gareth McCauley has scored for Northern Ireland! And that could be absolute goal dust for the away team! Thanks, Gareth, for joining us on the Northern Ireland podcast. Um, thanks for inviting us into your home. As you can see, your garden behind, nicely trimmed. <laughs> do you do that yourself? Um, yeah, a little bit of help from green thumbs and that there, but um, I like to get out there and cut the grass. I uh, find it therapeutic, get away from the kids, get away from the noise and just uh, foot her about. And it usually takes me longer than uh, it normally would, only because I get more peace when I'm out there. <laughs> so you put the headphones on and forget the... Um, oh no, we're defenders. <laughs> yeah, just get the headphones on and, uh, and just foot her away out there and... I mess about, yeah, quite enjoy it actually. <laughs> to be fair, the next time I'm cutting my grass, I'm going to be thinking, you know what, this isn't that bad. I was good enough for Gareth McCauley. I'm, I'm all right here. <laughs> this one, it's about a third of the size. <laughs> keep it real. I can't really complain. Keep it real. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, thanks for joining us. We're going to be going through, obviously, uh, an online career, football career, and some questions later from fans, but we're going to go. One place you need to start is from the start. Um, so, obviously, you grew up in Lahn. Um, yep. What was your childhood like in terms of football and when did you start playing and what was your introduction? Uh, my introduction to football was at, um, well, I obviously played around the house and stuff and that there. My granddad played and stuff, so we used to knock a ball about and play a little bit. But first sort of memory I can remember is uh, at primary school, um, at primary four I was in, getting pulled out and they sort of said, look, we need you to go with the, the, the team today. Which was probably a little bit, uh, a little bit younger, or whatever. So I had to, they rang home, got them to come and get me kit and boots and stuff, and that went with the team. Uh, Auntie Vol playing fields, freezing cold, blowing a gale. <laughs> There's a big slope uh, on the hill, and I can just remember, I can remember lying there, sheltering from the wind. I didn't play in the game and that there, but I went along with it, and that was uh, sort of my first introduction to it, and then was more, more included in the team, the school team, and playing on the school team, and then just sort of went from there, really. And uh, you moved over to England when you were 25, it was relatively late in your career. What what was life like away before you moved into professional football at 25? So working in the Irish League, were you doing anything as well as the Irish League? Yeah, I mean, uh, well, I went to uni for a bit. Uh, I've done a year in uni after my A-levels and stuff, and... Uh, it wasn't really for me that, so I went and, and worked and was serving my time as, as, um, as a draftman, so sort of drawing pl- uh, plans and things for a glazing company. 
um, playing at sort of Limfield Crusaders at the time, and um, then Marty took me to took me to Coleraine, and things sort of really so- took off from there football wise. Um, was getting linked with clubs across the water, things like that got there, so I ended up by um, left the work, started training sort of full time and stuff and that there, and uh, and really the hope that something was going to happen. Uh, and when it did happen, then I would be fit enough, fit enough to make that transition a, l- a little bit easier. So um, I always had it in the in my head that that's what I wanted to wanted to do, but um, just had to keep believing that my chance was going to come. I was going to say, obviously, that meant then that you did you did um, give up a lot to make what you wanted your dream to come true, and it happened. It's not as if it happened when you were. 18, 19, you kept plugging away and kept drafting and obviously now you've got the reward for it. So obviously you're happy that you didn't just give up at an early age? Yeah, I mean, it was, I'm pretty stubborn to be honest with you, like, so um, that was kind of what I wanted to do. Listen, it only really sort of clicked with me when I seen Husey making his debut for Barcelona at the, at the Bernabeu that I used to play beside him in the boys club. What am I doing here doing this? And he's there doing that, and it sort of clicked with me a little bit that I want. Uh, that was when I really wanted to start, uh, start playing like playing professionally and giving it a real go. Um, so yeah, that just that was like the seed or the click with me. But I was eighteen at the time, really. Uh, so it was um, it was late, if you like, that I actually decided that that's what I wanted to do but once I have my mind set on something then I'll, I'll go and I'll try and I'll do everything I can to, to do it if, if you know what I mean hmm. Moving on the, the gamble again paid off for you 2005 uh, you got your debut for Northern Ireland uh, against Germany how did, how did that feel? Um, yeah one of the one of the highlights one of the the best feelings ever um, you know lining up for your country it was a late call to be fair and I cancelled the holiday Lost the money on it as well, mate. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, cancel the cancel the holiday. Um, got a late call. Got on the second half of, against Germany, and you know, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed the experience. It's, um, it was amazing then, and um, I say I hasn't uh, disappointed any time. I've had the had the honour to to play in the in the years that have uh, preceded. Now I have a little quiz question for you from that game against Germany was I'm looking forward to this. I've been looking forward to this to see <laughs> huh, can you name any of the players from that 11 that started in that game obviously you came on as a sub for Keith Gillespie is that correct I believe in that half game time, Keith come off yeah I came on at half time yeah and then do you remember who started in that game any of the players I can remember Andy Smith played in the game mm-hmm. because on the halfway line he tackled someone and facing his own goal and put uh, Ballet clean through to score. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the that's the memory from yeah, that. Yeah, that was uh, that was the uh, memory from it. Yeah, <laughs> so, uh, so he's a coach and all now, isn't he? Yeah, One person I, I thought so. would never be a coach, but apparently he's quite he's quite good at it. Um, yeah, that's my that, that and uh, Jerry Armstrong proposing to his missus on the pitch at half time. Is my two two sort of real memories. <laughs> what a baby. <laughs> <laughs> what more could you want? <laughs> um, then your first competitive game was against uh, Sweden. Um, do you remember much about that? Was that the away game? Yep. Yeah, it's 1-1 one, one draw. <laughs> Lafferty scored, yeah. Good goal as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was, um, that was a, a bit of a roller coaster bit for me because at that stage after the Laurie Sanchez experience and you said obviously I should have said it I'll say it um, the the one the one thing I do regret is Sanchez gave me my debut <laughs> <laughs> because um, from that point on it, it was uh, it was a, a turbulent sort of relationship with me and all the players and stuff and that there although things were going well and that there Obviously, we knew sort of the lads that were going to play, blah blah blah, and you tried your, you tried your best anyway. But um, the experience wasn't as good. And at that time, I got asked the question, and I was uh, sort of off the cuff. Went, I might not, I might not go back, I might not play. 
because I was thinking you go away, you play, you travel back, and then your club football is affected, affected by it. And um, and that, and then the next thing, he was gone. Nigel was in, and uh, and he played me. But he played me at right back. Yeah, where I played mo- uh, most of my early uh, <laughs> international <laughs> games. <laughs> Solid, can't move right back. <laughs> <laughs> and how did you find that? then at that time and how was that transition um just like a just like a switch where you're back in love with it and you're like i can't believe i wasn't going to going to turn up or wasn't going to play back then it was easy it was easy loads of people loads of people weren't turning up loads of people weren't getting involved um and that's all changed it's all changed now and i think now the group so much better at introducing younger players into the group and um, just, a, just a better bond to, to, to how it was there was always a spirit usually vodka but it was, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it, was um, it was funny it was funny it was different back in the early early days when I started till it, till it is now so whenever, whenever you're getting selected at right back I remember being in the stands and seeing that you were at right back and the people w- 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 that was with me were all kind of saying, right, right, okay. Um, because we're, we're, if you're in nets, we're just happy you're on the pitch. So, but for you, knowing that that's probably not your strongest position, what are you thinking? Do you just go along with it anyway? Oh yeah, I was 100% dying to be on the pitch and I'd get like, what are we going back now? 12 years ago he didn't have to be a flying winger slot type right back then he just had to be solid and the, and the way we played anyway with with Nades at that time he just wanted it solid 4-4-2 four, 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 he, he pretty much played the whole time so you didn't really have to go anywhere or, or, or do you just well back then you just defend at the 18 yard box for your life for 89 out of the 90 minutes good times <laughs> <laughs> Was it good to watch, yeah? yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Wouldn't change a thing. And then uh, moving on a couple of years, you get your first goal for Northern Ireland against San Marino. And what I love about this is that it wasn't a header, it was a, a bullet half, half volley. volley. Some hit. Half volley shin pad. <laughs> <laughs> you must have been yeah, proud of that one. Oh, that was... Um that was brilliant, yeah. I can remember the, I can remember the trip. Do you know why I remember the trip as well? Because the guy was racing um, up and down the track around the pitch with uh, the, the bird costume thing on. <laughs> well, up and down the thing. And it, like, it was freezing cold, it was snow and everything, uh, everything I think. Um, but yeah, yeah, Grant McCann put the ball in and just managed to get a shin pad on it into the top corner. So it was uh, yeah, a proud, proud, proud moment, yeah. Because I love the uh, celebration as well that became your kind of trademark, the two arms out. That's where it all started. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, just keep it basic, don't you? <laughs> basic. <laughs> I got them dance moves. <laughs> <laughs> You're definitely uh, prolific for not just Northern Ireland, but for your club as well. Um, as a defender, what gives you more joy? Is it scoring one of those goals or is it keeping a clean sheet? Oh, um, defending first, really. Well, it depends what the, what goals and stuff in that. There, but, <laughs> um, for me, the defend, de- defending first gives me not the most joy, but that's my job. Satisfa- that's job my satisfaction. Job satisfaction. If you like, yeah, that's 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 where I start, and if I can chip in with goals, then it's uh, it's a bonus. Because to be honest, the boys at the front get paid all the money to score the goals, don't they? And we're just getting paid to take one on the face or <laughs> wherever to try and keep it out of your goal and and uh, basically win it back give it to the good players and let them go and play so in this uh, in this era who are you uh, friends with in the squad who are your who are your roommates at this time so this is around 2009 something around then so you've been around now for a good four years or so in the Northern Ireland squad yeah uh, I was always with Fino at the start 
And I know you just spoke in the field. <laughs> <laughs> I know, and I know he's throwing me under the bus for the madness that used to go on in the room. But, uh, so there's was no it? way I'm taking the blame for it. A sheep, a sheep was involved? In one of yeah, them? in the Faroe Islands, the stories sheep. about sheep. Yeah, the yeah. sheep story is incredible. Like, I think when, when Nigel speaks at different coaching things and that there, he uses it as an example of what do you do in this situation where you're out for a walk with your staff and there's a few players trying to get a sheep off the... <laughs> the roof of the hotel into in through the window or in through the door. <laughs> so um yeah that was a that was a good one. But this is your chance now. You can you can you know you can set up Warren Feeney as much as you want. This is your chance now to you know as you say, he threw you under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> it was um that was a, it was a good room. It was a good room. We um we done all sorts of stuff. I don't know did he oh. <laughs> You're thinking which story did he tell? <laughs> <laughs> he, 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 yeah, he talked about the golf out the, the golf yeah, out the window yeah. and, the thing and the, the drinking the water and stuff and that there and that didn't he? We used to do we done we done one, one on a away trip to Italy. Me, me, Fino, and uh, Paddy McCourt. We went out for a coffee in the afternoon and we was bored, so we, like we just had an espresso and stuff and that there it doesn't last very long, does it? So we thought to ourselves, wonder how many of these we could do. <laughs> <laughs> as you, as you do. In this little Italian coffee shop for the whole afternoon, drinking shots of espresso. We must have done fourteen or fifteen espresso shots, like, and we were like, <laughs> we were buzz, absolutely buzzing. But see, coming off it again, we back to the hotel and we're lying in the hotel. So we thought we were going to die in the, in the early evening before we went down for dinner, and that just like as the buzz was dropping off. Wouldn't recommend it, by the way, kids. I just wouldn't recommend that you try that. The sheep wouldn't stand a chance after <laughs> 14 espresso. Like. But again, that's, that was led by, led by Fino. <laughs> Northern Ireland free kick, plenty forward in green, hoping to get on the end of it, and Gareth McCauley's done it again. Two headers from the central defender, both from free kicks, and both have ended in goals. Um, so moving on, obviously we've talked about your, your goals um, maybe an obvious question, but is there a goal that stands out for you in my career? In your if for your Northern Ireland career? Oh. Um and why is it the one against Portugal? <laughs> no, I'm joking. We know which one you're going to get. That one, though. Oh, it was a good goal. Back in the game, that. <laughs> back back Again, goals. the two the two hands came out then as well. Yeah. I remember the celebration. Yeah, a wee bit, a wee bit of salt and pepper on that then. <laughs> <laughs> Bit extra come out there. Um, yeah, obviously, I mean, the, the goal in, in Lyon was uh, something else, you know, but people always ask about it, and I'm like, I just, I'm still at a stage where I just don't know what to say about it because people go, Oh, you're the first person from Northern Ireland to score at European Championships, and what the goal meant to not just the team, the supporters, but everyone, the country, all that sort of thing. Like, to me, it was, it was a goal, and we needed to win. We needed to win the game after the after the uh, the Poland result. We needed to get something from from that game. So that was the important thing to me at the time. But obviously, as people talk to you and you look back on it, then you see the sort of greater uh, greater magnitude of of that goal and sort of what it means, what it stands for all the sort of things come with it but see to be, on, be honest with you about the actual goal I can remember the ball's coming in and I knew the defender was missing it I knew he was under it so I'm just thinking don't miss the target don't miss the target and then there's a few seconds after that obviously I've heard it I've seen it's gone in and a few seconds after that I just can't remember anything and then obviously I've slid in the corner and then I can remember not being able to breathe because all the lads were on top of me <laughs> I don't think any of us could breathe either, to be fair. I just but yeah, it was it was it was amazing and it was brilliant that it happened in, at that end of the ground. Hmm. Um with all our supporters close to it and and behind it and that there. So um yeah, it's um something that makes me smile a little bit when I when I think about it. And it's probably now one of our most iconic photos. You running away from the goal, head looking up rain coming down arms stretched wide like that must be an image now that will live with you forever well 
I've heard of that many footballs, so I don't know what's <laughs> around the corner for me. I might not remember it in a few years, but um, yeah, well, I mean, you see the pictures from it and that there, and it was the whole the whole thing with the rain and the, uh, it's just quite theatrical, quite uh, quite dramatic, and um, I say obviously I can't remember a few seconds after it, but. Um, you know the, the the feeling after it, and the feeling that the, the lads got in the the dressing room, and and that when we got back in, it was uh it was something that we were all really really sort of proud of. Not just the goal, you know, the performance. Um, Boz and McGinn got a goal a goal as well. Obviously, starting in the Irish League as well, and um and, and that uh, that really set us up to to have a have a right goal at the rest of the tournament. What were you thinking with that McGinn goal when Josh kind of takes the ball and all of Northern Ireland is screaming, just go to the corner flag and stay there, and he and he cuts in. What, what are you thinking when you're on the pitch looking at that? Are you thinking, go to the corner flag? The same as everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> or, Josh, don't shoot. <laughs> um, yeah, on the pitch we're thinking the same, the same thing, the, di- the dying moments and that there. Um, obviously... Has worked out. Has worked out well. But I've been in situations before where the ball's been lost. The teams come up the other end and, and scored, and then you're like crying in your hands and 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 that. But um, yeah, it's, it's brilliant, and it's the type of thing Josh Josh does, where everyone's going, "No, Josh, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it," and then he's done something like I don't know, scored a goal, or he's done something uh, really good, really good for the team. He's starting to take that mantle off you now as the goal scorer, isn't he, Josh? He's so like, been telling you that. He's been telling you those questions. He's written that in, hasn't he? <laughs> no, 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 that's, that's just a personal thought, you know. Previously, you're walking off the pitch going, Josh, you need to give me a cut of your wages here. Like. He's still three goals behind and he's washing my cars until he, uh, <laughs> until he, until he catches up. So he's got a few, I think he's the next few games to get himself, get himself a few goals. He's, he's catching. And what was it like in that change room after the Ukraine game? I mean, that must have been an experience that none of you have obviously had before, like the euphoria, but yet you're in the middle of a tournament as well. Yes, but you know what? I had to do all the media stuff, all the flash interviews, all the stuff. And, you know, I feel so sorry for Ronaldo and Messi and all them boys who, who have to do it every week after their Champions League games and that there, after a big result or after a goal or whatever. They don't get, you don't get to go in and enjoy it. Hmm. It literally was half an hour before I got to the got to the dressing room, but then I, we had an hour a bit of a party once I got in there. Like so, I was gonna say surely that restarts so it. it. Was uh, yeah. it was all right, but I did mi- I missed the first initial initial bit of it with um, with the boy because you just get dragged off and you can't you're not allowed to refu- refuse the mm. these flash interviews and stuff that they that they do at uh, at top level football games. Mm. Obviously, there are the massive highs from the Euros, but moving on to the, the game against Wales, it's quite a quite a big low as well. Tell tell us about that that game against Wales. Um, you know, there was nothing in the game at all. Uh, if anything, I thought we had had a chance, had had the better of the chances, the better of the game, even. Um, and then just that's that's just that split second where I put through my own goal, stretching, um, stretching for a cross which could have left, could have not have left. Kind of was right behind me. If sands, maybe it's all sorts of stuff. But um, at the time, I felt that I felt I had to play, had to play the ball. And I, I mean, I've got I've got it wrong on the on the stretch and obviously put through put through my own goal. But um, I mean. I, I can laugh about <laughs> laugh about it now a little bit. At the time, it wasn't uh, it wasn't so funny. Uh, my overriding feeling was it was everyone was going home. That was what I was thinking um, after after the game. Not only that, I got pulled in for a drugs test as well, which was not uh, not brilliant. Not especially at that uh, stage, especially when something like that has happened. Yeah, probably not best. Uh, Bad timing on that one, isn't it? Yeah, but you know, I'm, I'm angry sometimes around, <laughs> around the place in that day. Like, so <laughs> you can imagine what the poor drugs tester was getting. <laughs> but um, yeah, that got even worse as well because there was a screen up in the up in the drugs testing room. Because once you're with them, you can't 
you can't leave. Usually, mm. you, if you've got a chaperone, you can you can leave, which would have been funny because I took a, took a boy right out onto the pitch. Would have <laughs> which, <laughs> him holding my hand with his with his bib and all. But um, so all of all the lads went back out to the to the crowd and stuff, didn't they? And um, I'm obviously locked up in the in the drugs in the drugs room, but seeing it on a screen, so mm. I was going mental. Yeah, and. It takes time to wee sometimes, doesn't it? Especially you get stage fright and all that. Yeah, and just doing, you've got all this paperwork to fill in and and um, and that. So that was uh, that was sort of my emotion went from upset emotional to angry emotional uh, in a in a split second after sort of getting dragged in getting dragged into that room and not being allowed to leave and stuff again after that there. But um, yeah, I said at the time as well, I was glad it was me that had done it and not one of the younger lads. Not, I don't mean me that scored an OG or anything like that there, but that it fell on my shoulders to burden mm. that uh, rather than the game because the game could have went to penalties. Somebody's missing a penalty, all that sort of, all that sort of pressure that comes with it. So, uh, in a way, what do you say? I don't know how to say it. I was happy it was me. I get what you yeah, mean. No, yeah, I, I get what you mean. Without to, it, to, yeah. to take the burden of it rather than one of the younger players in the, in, the, in the squad, and I, I managed to put it behind me. Uh, went and played pretty much every game in the in the Premier League the year after. Scored six, seven goals or whatever it was. So um, that's not something I carry with me uh, every day. Obviously, we're talking about. Wales there but my question was more about overall the experience of Euro 2016 um, what what was that like to be representing Northern Ireland obviously the first time we made the European Championships but you as a player and as a squad going away being on the main European stage that must have been something that you're proud of even to have just got there um, yeah you say that but what you said is just got there but that to me was never enough we had all the pundits and that there didn't give us a chance of getting a point. Kept on saying this, that, the other thing. So to me, it was about going there and being a part of the tournament. And um, I felt we, we did that. After, obviously, the uh, the Poland game, I the, the, the dis disappointing thing about that was we didn't really do what we had done in qualification, where we were direct, we were powerful, we were creating chances, we were getting crosses in, we were we were scoring, go scoring goals, we were looking solid, we sort of um, um, played within ourselves, if you like, in the game and that was my that was my, my disappointment from, from that game, it felt we didn't give a Northern Ireland performance that had got us to the tournament and uh, and that, so obviously then you move into the Ukraine game and the the, the proud of the of the performance and then and then battling and battling through the rest of the tournament we got obviously got through no one gave us a chance of that happening and uh, you know we were there on merit people forget we we won our, we won our group as well in the thing and we had gone a load of games uh, unbeaten in, in doing that and um, set set new records as as we were doing it so. Um, yeah, but the I mean the tournament the tournament was an amazing experience and, and being there and being a part of it and um really putting putting Northern Ireland on the on the map um and shining a a light on it uh, from a different angle than probably the the press that the you know the the, the country usually gets because I was at the Euros and obviously it's it was we were there for about well, three weeks something like that was it from start to finish maybe just a little over that. Yeah, maybe just shy we, of four we were, maybe I think all together we were away 43 days or something because oh, you had the trip to against the, the game against Slovakia, Slovakia wasn't yeah, it before well, yeah. and what was that like experience because obviously you guys the squad hadn't done that before you know it's a real new experience being it in was, that yeah it was um, it was different and the thing is because it was such a new experience we, we just sort of went with it and went with everything and didn't know any better so you were able to enjoy it uh, as as you went. Um, I mean, the security around it was just ridiculous. It was out of this world. And see, to be honest with you, by the by the end of it, um, it was starting to be getting a bit tedious. The security stuff and that there because 
couldn't even go for a coffee without obviously the guys were there for a reason the thing but you couldn't go to a little town for a coffee without armed guards going and clearing everyone out and then you just go on three or four lads who wanted to go out for a coffee and get a bit of fresh air 14 espressos <laughs> 14 espressos <laughs> that's why they were there to stop us from doing that <laughs> Michael's obviously heard that story um, but yeah um, obviously the fence and the security around the around the thing and that there and it just felt like it was starting to close in close in close in because everyone's living in the everyone's pockets and stuff and, mm. and that there and just all the time and you couldn't have even five minutes where you could go and just have five minutes on your own five minutes sort of peace everyone everyone was sort of there but listen that's football that's modern day football and um, all the big teams have been doing that year after year after year and the big players have been doing that so football's not really seasonal anymore with these, with the camps and stuff and that, there it's like twelve months of the year that you're you're playing, and it's um, it's a lifestyle if you like. Where you have to keep yourself, and and you know you're making them sacrifices, being away from your family and and things. But I mean, for for that for that moment at Leon, all them sacrifices that you've ever made are are worthwhile. And those sacrifices as well paid off in your club career uh, going into that season with West Brom you ended the season with more goals than Wayne Rooney Pogba Martial David Silva Sané Yaya Toure a few quids worth there by the way that's uh, <laughs> some effort moves in a free didn't it <laughs> <laughs> so what, what, do you, what do you say that like outscoring those players is some, some achievement um I don't know it's probably karma just levelling itself out isn't it the highs and the lows from the, the, the highs and then the low from the Euros and that and then um, just a, I don't know what it could be an extra determination or, or not or or whatever it just seemed to be things fell to me that season and I was able to able to finish them off and um, just seemed to be sort of on a on a bit of a roll where the, where, where the goals were coming as well as um, as well as the clean sheets my fantasy team was absolutely flying to be honest with, with you at the back like captain every week it's just unreal you, uh, there's a few people that said that to be fair I've actually done a piece with someone about it and I uh, think because they were talking about when uh, the goal I got awarded when Johnny hit it at West Ham probably won't remember it but it was late on for an equaliser and there was all this debate who got the assist and whose goal it was and people were going mental about it because of their fantasy points Oh, it's all very important oh, yeah, yeah. on the thing. But, uh, <laughs> Serious business. It's not shooter's goal anymore. Anyway, I don't even. Johnny said it wasn't on target. Couldn't have been on target if it hit me on the, on the <laughs> side of the head where it, <laughs> where it went in. The in swinging corner. The calling. It's one one. Ten minutes before the break. Moving on from that season, takes into the World Cup qualifying campaign. Um, we're going to talk about the games against Switzerland in a moment, but for that qualifying campaign itself, the momentum just seemed to keep going from the Euros. It just seemed as if it was just keep going upwards yeah. rather than like, a, oh, we've been to the Euros and oh, maybe we're going to dip a bit or maybe the expectations won't be as high, but it just kept kind of growing. Was that the thought in the squad as well? Yeah, I think, I mean... It- <laughs> Mike, like so, Michael took all the excuses away that there used to be when you turned up to play for Northern Ireland. They were all sort of all taken away, and once we got it, once we got it going and got confidence and belief that um, players could perform regularly on that stage and get results, and you don't want that to slip away. You, for me, it's always it was always about moving forward, always about getting better, progressing. And and that's sort of the same with with this squad. No one wants it to be another thirty years before Northern Ireland goes to uh, a major tournament. And obviously, it was the crest of the wave at the time, but there was transit uh, transition in the in the squad as well. You're losing the likes of Berry and uh, people like that who are who were big players for us um, over the years and stuff. And and you know, people expect it after that. There, like for myself and. Uh, Husey and that to 
to finish up after the Euros and that and they're going oh what high that would be to, to go out of the Euros and, and all this stuff but while you're fit enough and you, and you can do it you just you just want to do it and you want more all the time and um, we want it to not go and prove to anyone but we just want it more if you like in, in that campaign and um, as you say so close to going to a World Cup it's um, that's more sickening than the goal against Wales by the way Mm. Is that was that moment the uh, the penalty decision with Corey Evans? Is that one of the worst moments you've had on a football pitch? Um, at the time, no, because you can't really tell at the time. Well, you can, but it's you don't know just how big that decision is going to be. Yeah, you don't. Know, yeah, you don't know how how big that was uh, that was going to be in in terms of the. In terms of the uh, the outcome of the two legs, but um, obviously you see the replays and you and you look back and then you feel the unjust from it and and that and probably the unjust from that there drove us to a a performance away from home on a horrible pitch mm. where we we could have actually got ourselves um, you know to the to the World Cup because I thought we were better than them away f- away from home as much as they were better than us in the in the home game. Um, I think if the home game had a finished nil nil going out there, we we had nothing to lose, and um, and we put on a performance that was again go back to it that that you're proud of um, from a Northern Ireland team. So I've been out in Switzerland, and the obviously Johnny Evans came close at the end with the clearance off the line, oh, which was <laughs> I remember being in the uh, in the stand. I meant to be doing Twitter updates and I've just completely forgotten about doing that because <laughs> I'm just so engrossed in the game that I, and Johnny Evans coming close at the end and but what was that emotion like at full time because I, I mean I was just in the stand and I was absolutely gutted and but let alone I mean obviously don't know how you guys must have felt yeah but the, hope hope is one of the worst things you can you can have it's harder for it's harder for you watching it because you're hoping you're hope, all the time you're hope, you're hoping Listen, if Johnny Johnny's effort goes in, we win that game. They were done. They were done. They were they were dead. We had ran them into the ground on that heavy pitch as well, and that goal would have given us the lift to go on and finish it in in the extra time period or whatever was coming up. But I mean, that's the that's the fine lines in football, isn't it? It's such a such a great game to mm. to be involved in, and as you say you obviously have the same sort of emotions as as um as the players and that's the one thing with the player everyone wants the same thing in club football it's a little bit different because people have their own agendas people have this that the other thing going on but when you're playing for your national team and all the supporters everyone wants the same thing and that's a that's a big bond that we have and with the with the team and the and the people in the crowd and now there's obviously another big chance of qualifying for another tournament perfect start for Northern Ireland but for you and your involvement what does the future hold now for Gareth McCauley I need a job first Donna (laughs) I'm sitting here talking to you guys instead of playing football Um, no idea no idea I'm not uh, making any sort of knee jerk reactions or or anything that they are just um Whatever, whatever comes along. I've been, um, I've been training throughout the summer here and stuff and that. So, um, we'll see, we'll see what uh, what's around the corner. It's it's hard to uh, it's hard to give up. Uh, but then again, I'll be forty in December, so maybe it might be time to wise up. Six hundred and ninety nine career caps. That's, that's what we've been told. Six hundred ninety nine career been. appearances. Apparently, apparently you might you know better than us, but no idea. Six hundred ninety nine is that 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 would be enough for me to try and get one more. I don't know about you. I'm a stickler yeah, for you numbers. You say that as well, but I've got nine international goals and I don't want ten. You don't want ten? No. What, what's wrong? What's wrong with ten? O'Neill, Whiteside, Best, Macaulay. All on nine. <laughs> yeah, that's fair enough. Actually, isn't it? It's a good list of names to be alongside, yeah. yeah. I'll give you that. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I'll take, listen, I'll take 10. <laughs> but, um, yeah, people, throw that, people say that to me as well. Sometimes and I think to myself, wow, that's a, 
that's a trio to be to be involved with or to have your name alongside them and stuff and that there so um stick or twist in it so i think i might just stick <laughs> and the question for myself would be obviously you say about how much you love football how you love the buzz of it is that what keeps you motivated to keep your training by yourself i find that incredible to think about the self-discipline that obviously you guys must have when you're looking for clubs and you're training away yeah, from I mean, the club. I've, been, I've been lucky it's sort of only really well last season there was always stuff in the pipeline and stuff and that there and it's been a bit the same same this season so i mean let's go through this let's go through that year after year after year i mean i've I've been lucky that I've always moved to somewhere where I felt I was really wanted, and I've always played for the for the clubs I've been at. Like literally, when I was fit, I played all, all the games up and sort of till the last, the last sort of couple of seasons. But um, just move. What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> About how like you keep yourself um, disciplined? Yeah. yeah. Um, Go, like I said earlier on to me football is like a lifestyle so I don't mind getting up in the morning and going out and running running a 5k or going and, and doing something and I actually need that to to burn off my energy or I don't really sleep at night I don't even think it's a guilty thing where if I've not done something I don't sleep but um, I think I need to burn off uh, burn off energy and, and things like that there so I like to be I like to be active I like to be doing stuff and um, I think it's good for you anyway just uh, one lap around the garden would probably be you'd be sleeping for a week out of that <laughs> <laughs> but like, the goal nets up as well, so he's clearly practicing. Whenever it was in the small goals, <laughs> <laughs> we we came over to uh, to West Brom, and I remember saying, "As all oh, we're here now, is Gareth ready for his interview?" And I said, "Oh, he's just doing a wee bit of extra training. He'll be with you soon." Is that something that you have always took through your career? Is that you just want to push yourself to to, to last that little bit longer in your career? Um, yeah, you know what's um. I think you get wiser and you learn. I, I, to me, I used to do, if extra training to me was going out and running till I felt ill, like running till, to the extreme type of thing. That was extra training, getting extra fitness. But, um, the way the game's moved on and the, the people that are involved in it and they're a lot more clever than footballers are on how their, how their bodies work and how anatomy works and all the stuff that you probably should know as a player but 99% of the players don't and um, all the sports science stuff that's in now so um, toward I started only probably started doing like uh, strength and conditioning stuff when I was 31 32 um, but I feel if I had I had that exposure to that um, earlier in my career um, I could have been better again but um, see nowadays, like players don't, young players don't want to listen. They don't want to do it because that's what you are. As a young player, you just feel you're invincible and you can run and you can do this and you can do that. But you can become more efficient in your running by doing all this strength stuff and listening to people who have uh, got degrees and are doctors and are know how bodies work and know how they function and all that. And um, just by buying into that, yeah, it's probably it's probably kept me going um, longer than, than most people, and also I didn't start till later as well. So uh, I think that's that's helped in my in my progression in my career as well. And you're saying you obviously you said you didn't want to make any knee jerk reactions, but is the hope that obviously you'd help us uh, get to another European finals? Um, possibly, yeah. I mean, Michael wants me to keep playing and. And stuff and that so I've been trying to get something uh, that ticks all the boxes really where I mean I can live I can live here I don't have to live five and a half hours away um, which I've done last year and people say it's it's only up the road and it's this that the other thing but um, I've I've never done it before we've always been together and always the family so the family have always um, experienced my football with me hmm. Or if I come if I come home miserable, then the kids are there and you, I can switch off, like just like that. But when you're on, when you're on your own and stuff and that there, it's a, it's a different kettle of fish. And that was something I didn't want to do. Didn't want to do this season. Uh, was was live away for 
the majority of the time. So, um, yeah, if, if I can get something that ticks the boxes and I can live, uh, I can live here, then I'll, I'll definitely, uh, I'll definitely play. Swindon Town's probably a bit far then. That's a bit, that's a bit cutting. <laughs> Big Danny's there, though, isn't he? Big Ballard, he yeah. He is there, yeah. He's got to, uh, he's got to come through and start playing, start playing games in the, in the very near future. <laughs> When you lose Alexa Husey and well probably myself, if not this year, definitely next year. Um, we need boys to we need boys to start uh, start coming through and and he's got he's one with uh, with a with a big future. Have you been impressed with Ballard? I know we've certainly been impressed with him with his under twenty one career so far. Yeah, he's um he's a he's a good player. Um I want to say young players don't do like the strength and stuff and that there. I've seen him in the gym and noticed him in the gym when we've been away and he's doing stuff to help improve. Best thing about him is he asks asks uh, questions. So when he in training and where you're doing stuff and that and he's like, should I be doing this? Should I be doing that? What do you think of this? What do you think of that? Um, so the, them sort of attributes will, will help him progress really, really quickly. Now that he's out playing and um, men's football if you like rather than sort of the under 23 stuff yeah, which would be easy for him really because he's a, he's a big, a big strong player. strong fella like beast isn't he big boy. but uh, moving on then we'll go on to the the Gava zone Okay, so first question we have in is from a guy called Justin. He sent in a voice note here. Beaver. Hi Gareth, Justin here. What about you? Just wondering, who's your favourite person you've roomed with on away trips and why? Caw. Under <laughs> pressure there. <laughs> you like, I don't want to offend anyone. Hey, Beaver no. has put you on the spot there. <laughs> How about you have different reasons for different people? I do have different uh, reasons for different people. You want a bit of peace or you want a bit of a laugh? Yeah, the two the two boys I roomed with were obviously Fino, which we've talked about, and that was just madness, that room. <laughs> <laughs> just lively. Um But we used to we used to like burn ourselves out during the day basically go to sleep and then get up at like six half six in the morning and that was our day started so we'd be down for breakfast doing all the stuff and all, all the madness and that and then um then i started rooming with brunty which was a lot more sort of calmer room with him at west brom and northern ireland and stuff and uh do you know what it's it's all we had the same sleep patterns <laughs> so <laughs> didn't know everything got so choreographed that's brilliant yeah but can you imagine sleeping in a, in a room with somebody who's like still snor up they're, they're snoring or mm. or like McGuinness like he's de he's desperate to room with me <laughs> desperate <laughs> but there's no chance it's happening because he stays up to stupid o'clock watching Netflix whereas I'll be asleep yeah. and he sleeps in till 10 minutes before the bus leaves the training and I'm up from quarter to seven in the morning and down for breakfast and doing all my preparation stuff and that there but Josh doesn't need to he's so we're chopping cheese in terms of sleeping so as much as he wants to room with me it's never gonna it would never happen there's a sitcom in there somewhere isn't there like McCauley McCauley and McGinnis. McGinnis. Yeah. <laughs> it's a video I did one night with McCauley. turn that Netflix off <laughs> so not watching Piggy Blinders he's been down here the last couple of weekends I thought he moved in <laughs> and he worked done he didn't have games Hi Gareth, it's Patrick from Belfast. My question to you is, were you annoyed that the referee got you mixed up uh, with Craig Dawson when you were sent off against Man City? And do you think you look anything like Craig Dawson? It's Patrick from Belfast. It's a, it's a weird surname, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, at the time I was uh, raging, yeah. And... Um, Obviously, I've, got, I've gone in. What was that, a minute and 40 seconds or something crazy like that? Second gone in, got shard, whatever. Uh, had a message on my phone from um, 
Richard Garlick, like a technic- technical director and stuff, and he goes, oh, we've appealed it already, type thing from, from the game. Uh, come on up. So I've gone up into the into the Emirates Lounge at City and that, and I've gone in and this thing opens up. And I'm not joking you, like, the hospitality there is, like, Michelin star, a la carte, like, ridiculous. So I've gone in, whatever, sat in the, <laughs> sat in the director's box, box and watched the boys get absolutely pumped for 90 minutes like, while I was sitting there, knowing that they had appealed it. And I'll be able to play the next game anyway. But um, <laughs> that's the bright side, people, really. Isn't people it? always, people always say me and Dawson look alike all the time, and uh, he didn't like it because <laughs> I was ten years older than him. So um, <laughs> yeah, I didn't, I didn't mind it, and it was funny as well because um, I was at the Belfry with the with the kids, and the referees were having a golf day, and. Um, and they were all that, they were all sort of laughing about it and stuff and that there and they were ripping the they were ripping um um what's uh Sw- I can't pronounce the name, Swarvik in it. Oh, the referee. Yeah, yeah Neil Neil Swarvik. Neil Swarvik, yeah. Um because he was there and stuff and that there and he come up and he was like, All right, Doss and I was like, Oh yeah, yeah, brilliant. No, it was funny, I had I had some good, I had some uh, a laugh with them about it and stuff and that there at, at the at the time but um, it was a strange one and I was like how did you get that wrong like I was like I was like telling you it wasn't me <laughs> Doss, to be Doss didn't help it either by the way because he walked away he yeah sort of walked away wasn't helping you either in the thing so he's like he looked at this thing in the shorts and obviously he's, he's he knew it was a double number so um, I wore 23 Doss wore 25 and it was the two it was the two basically the double number the two three on my shorts that it that um that he got the, mis- the the mistake the mistake against he'd gone 20 frees to 25 because Doss had like scarpered away out of the way to he thinks if I go see, see yeah. himself he thinks if I go away here <laughs> then not, I'm yeah. going to get away with this he didn't then think red card for you then yeah. he's probably gone oh oh no <laughs> <laughs> it was a bit uh, a bit strange but I don't know what you do what he, what he said I just had to go you just had to get off I just I put, test it as much as I could and was like I'm telling you, Drew. It's, it's crazy. Like, I can't. did you know at that time that that was going to be a moment that like you're going to look really silly here after this? Like, this is me that you should be sending off. You're trying to help them out, aren't you? You're trying to say, look, it wasn't me, but I wasn't going. It was him. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't going. It was him. I was going. It wasn't me. You can't send me. If, how can you send me off in that there? But obviously, he's giving you a red card, so you, you have to go. Otherwise, the next thing you're up in front of the the FA and you're serving all sorts of bands mm. and accounts and, and that but I say turned out well in the end got some nice food and watched the lads run about <laughs> I was going to say you've gone up to the Emirates and just yeah. gone <laughs> <laughs> sandwich please <laughs> you know, nowadays VAR would have struck that one off wouldn't it you'd still be on the field and then you wouldn't have got a lovely Caesar salad or whatever <laughs> no well, it's it's been annoying me a little bit watching the, the first round of games. Not a fan? Mm, certain parts of it. I think it worked quite well at the the World Cup and stuff. Hmm. And when it's been used, but I think they've taken it too far now where they're, they're watching everything. They're watching challenges and they're watching all sorts of stuff going on. As a, de- as a defender, would you have VAR in your head when you're playing? Well, you're going to have to now because they're looking at everything. You can't use Gail anymore. You just have to... They're taking... They're nearly making... Ro- they're going to make robots. Football is into robots where they can't play with any personality or any Gail or anything where they can... You can do stuff to affect things or affect the game. It's all just big brother effect. They're watching everything. On big calls, don't get me wrong, the goal line stuff I think has been brilliant when it's come in. Mm. But it's a simple thing with a with a watch that buzzes and and that I, I think um, reviewing every goal I think is just ridiculous because there'd be no point celebrating. You might as well just stop and stand there in case something's happened somewhere further down the line where they pull it back for a free kick in halfway line or or something like that. Um, to me, that's taking it too far. Big decisions and stuff, yes, but. Um, even on challenges, I don't think it should be used. I think the referee's got to be in control of the game. Otherwise, what's the point in being there? Well, let him do his job, type yeah, thing. Let him let him do stuff. But I think big big decisions and big calls 
I think it should be be used like in penalty decisions or or um, goals where, where you can tell as a player or a crowd that something hasn't been quite right. Yeah. Or, I know do you know what I mean? Like a common sense version of okay, we'll go to the thing, mate, or bring it in where it's only being allowed to be used like uh, two calls. And I do think from, like from each the, coach can like a challenges place. type thing, like yeah. we're we having in tennis. Yeah, I think so. Rather than having the, the scrutiny the whole time with people watching it on, on screens and stuff, I don't think that's going to make the referee's job any better or easier. I just think it should be used on the big calls. And we have another, we had a couple of questions sent in on Instagram. So this isn't actually a question, but it's more of a request from a guy called Oliver Grez, Grezmek. Yeah, we'll go with that. We'll go with that, yeah. <coughs> so he says, when Big G scored against Ukraine, my mate missed it because he was buying a round of 0.5% beer. He regrets it every day. Can can he give him some consoling words? So he missed your goal in Ukraine because he was banned around. <laughs> right. Of not point five percent. Of point not point five percent beer, I believe. Yeah, so couldn't even drown his sorrows really. Oh, he's <laughs> if he's buying not point five percent proof beer, he deserves to miss that goal. <laughs> That's not going to cheer him up. That's the consoling word. Yeah, that's the consoling word. <laughs> you deserved it. You can pass that on, Oliver. Been better buying water. <laughs> Needs to be hydrated. <laughs> uh, we've got one here from Charlotte Carberry. She said, who is your best mate in the Northern Ireland squad? Uh, pr- uh, probably McGuinness. Yeah? Yeah. Even though he keeps you up at night, uh, comes around. No, he doesn't keep me up at night because I keep my door locked in the room and that. But <laughs> he, um, yeah, I first met I first met Josh right on um, the away the disastrous Nights of Worthington away trip to uh, South America to Chile. So the first time we went there, it was the worst trip I think I've ever been on. We played um, Turkey and Connecticut. And it, our boots were melting to our feet, and that there it was like a fight. Like played them at three o'clock in the afternoon in the middle of summer in Connecticut because it was going on uh, Turkish TV. And I'm not joking, you. We were dying, melted. Boy, boys were green, <laughs> sick on like the boss and everything from the like, sunstroke, whatever. Um, after the game and that went down to South America, but uh, Josh on that trip was the first time I had e- experienced him and stuff and that there, and he was. Um, it's just lively, wasn't it? He's just, it's just pretty much happy all the time and up to something. And um, probably a version, a version of Fino, if you like, in a way. Uh, and that um, we've just, yeah, we just, we just hit it off really. And I mean, a lot of stuff. I'd be critical of Josh, to Josh, but always defend him. Yeah, it's a sign of a friend. Away, away, away from it, like, because, you know, we all, I always get, I know it probably annoys him, but people always go to him, oh, you used to be a goalkeeper and stuff and that there. I mean, that was so many years ago. Long time ago. That, that I just think people should show respect to to him as a, as a centre forward now. I mean, he's scoring international goals and he's, he's just moves the game to a 10 hour championship club and, He's always been progressing and always been getting better and all in that and um, just his character. I get get on got on with him. I say he's been down here the last couple of weekends and stuff, washing my cars and uh, <laughs> taking me out for lunch and, and all that and, and all that sort of stuff. So um, yeah, he calls me he calls me family and stuff in that there. Like so, um, I've got a, I've got a lot of time for Josh in that there. Do you, do you um, think the squad needs a character like Josh in it? Yeah, um, I've, he, listen, Josh is liked by everyone. He's liked by he's by, he's just one of them people that you can't help but like. Um, listen, there's other good characters, and everyone brings their own their own mix and their own own sort of blend to it. And um, whereas me, I I, I, dem- I like sort of people think I'm angry all the time and stuff and that there and that, but I just 
demand like standards. Things got to be things have got to be right. I don't like if things aren't right and things aren't slipping. And it's all the small things. I think of if you let little bits go, um, which have all been put in place by, by by Michael over the over the the course of his tenure and stuff. And that I mean, it's changed so much. But um, if you if you let the little things go, then things start to to creep into it, and that's how you'll lose the. Not lose the grip, but lose the the spirit and and what's there and and uh, and things like that. But you may everyone brings their their own their own things to it. Some of the lads you don't see a lot of the time. They like to play computer games and stuff. But there's maybe a group of three or four who will be like doing that there. And then obviously we all come together at meal times and training times and um, traveling on the bus or whatever. And yeah, it's a it's a good it's a good blend. But like I say, we are close. And it's not just um, where you meet up and uh, have a week together, and then you don't speak to anyone for the rest of the, the rest of the time. Whatever. There's always always on phone calls or WhatsApp and all the all the stuff that normal people do as well. So uh, I think getting towards the end here, there's a question that we uh, like to ask on the podcast, just a random one. <laughs> Is uh, I don't know how you'll answer this one. I don't know when you most recently been in Northern Ireland, but. Have you got a favourite chippy in Northern Ireland? Back home, was there something that sticks out to you? Chippy was, um, yeah, uh, Dee's Diner. Um, Dee's, good grub. Just around the, just around the corner from, from my, my, well, my two granny's house, about in the middle of the middle of that. Used to, uh, used to go down there and get the, get the snack box, get the old chicken and chips and stuff and that. And chicken and chips snack box? Yeah. Interesting. Uh, it's uh, it's more a restaurant slash chip shop now, but um, still still good. Final question, I guess, from myself would be then looking forward. Um, like to end on the present is just Germany, Holland. It couldn't really be any harder in the next four games. But do you feel Euro twenty twenty is there for the taking after the start that we've had? Yes. Um. I just think the fixtures fall, fall nicely. Um, obviously, you've got friendly coming up, and then the then the Germany game. But um, I think they play Holland while we have the friendly. Isn't that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I believe so. So that's going to be a tough game for them. Um, obviously, we want the Germans to win that one, and um, but we want it to be a hard fought encounter. And, <laughs> yeah. Um, Another was it three two in the first game, so another one of them would be fine. And they travel to and they travel to Belfast. Um, Geared a little bit off the back of that, and then we want some good old Northern Irish weather with wind, rain, <laughs> swirling and gale force, and uh, whatever we can muster up, and the the crowd behind us, and a bit of luck on the night. And um, it's one of them. It's one of them things. Football, isn't it? If you're romantic and. Um, there's, you know, it can throw up any any sort of uh, any sort of revolt uh, results, and it's, it's going to be hard fought. It's going to be difficult, but um, I think there's a there's a good chance just the, the way the fixtures have failed for us as well that um, we could do something. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, that's all from us then. Well, thank you for your time, Gareth. No problem, pleasure. Really appreciate yeah, that. That was you. fascinating, and uh, obviously, good luck with finding club and we hope to see you in September if not we're down the job centre <laughs> <laughs> well what a place to end in there <laughs> you can take our spot you know? <laughs> I'd do a better you, job you boys are good enough yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what praise anyway thank you very much super lads thank you cheers well that was an enjoyable podcast not going to lie it's probably one of the uh, best days of our working careers here what a man what a man some interesting stuff all about Leon about his future career, everything the Gower Zone was covered. So thank you for your questions. And obviously, as we said at the start of the podcast, you can win this shirt here. It says, best wishes, Gareth McCauley, signed by the man himself. Andy, how can people win it? People can win it, Adam, by going on to our YouTube channel. This might be where you're watching it at the minute. If you're listening, then hop on over to our YouTube channel. It's Northern Ireland. And comment under the video with, Oh, Gareth, Gareth McCauley. McCauley. Sign shirt, please give it to me. Or whatever you want, really. like. And make sure you're subscribed on to our YouTube channel. If you don't have a YouTube account, we've seen this a couple of times. Like, oh, I don't have a YouTube account.
one, so I can't enter the competition. Just make one. Make Subscribe. One. And then you have a chance of winning the Gareth McCauley shirt. We don't have a signed Gareth McCauley shirt. I want no. it. Like, yeah, yeah, no, I don't own it. Every one. time I enter, Adam voids my entry. And delete so. straight away, yeah. Absolute nuisance man is to my life. So if you enjoyed uh, today's podcast, make sure you obviously listen back to our catalogue of, co- of uh, podcasts. You know we have Michael O'Neill, Stephen Cragen, Warren Feeney, uh, Jordan was a Jones. particular favourite of mine. Warren Feeney. Jim McGilton's Plus, another good one. That plenty was a good of one. good stories. Um, so we have plenty of there to listen back to. Uh, you can listen to them obviously on YouTube, on iTunes, Spotify, wherever you like to listen to your podcasts. Um, over the next few weeks, we'll be doing podcasts around different matches that are obviously coming up with our women's games, the men's games, the under 21. So <laughs> do keep your eye out for podcasts that are coming up sporadically over the next few weeks. But until uh, we see you next, there's only uh, one phrase to go out on, and that is... Greenwood Army! No! Armstrong! Good ball, the flag stays down. Heaney! Oh! He scored again! It's Davis again! It's job done now!